But if you've got an ambition and you're on the fence about your own ambition, how the hell can you expect anyone to invest in what you're doing? Because you're not even serious about it. So stop reading motivational books. Stop fucking posting how many times you're rich, rich, rich dad, poor dad, and go out and go and get it. Tommy Mallet, how are we doing? Lou, thanks for having me, brother. No, how are you? I'm very good, thank you very much. I'm very good. I appreciate you coming down, although we did get a little bit lost on the way. Because you sent me to number <laughs> 60, yeah, and I walked here, and number 60 is miles away. This is called the 60 building. So you're ringing me like I'm a madman, and you're miles away. But yeah, <laughs> we got there in the end. To be fair, though, you, I mean, there's, there's some teething problems. Obviously, season two, first guest, so I appreciate you coming on. I'm impressed. I'm impressed for mm. season two. Yeah, Ali, Ali's, Ali's found the new spot. It's nice. Yeah, no, no, it's sick. The setup's good. Everything's good. Listen, you, you ain't going in half hearted, are you? No. Smashing it. You know, first season, I was just, you know, getting to grips with things. And then obviously COVID hit. So then I just thought I'd just do it at home. But it's just effort getting people in. So now we've got two spots one in Birmingham and one in London. So, you know, expect big things. I'm looking at the number one, UK's number one biggest podcast first. And then, you know, we'll, we'll go global with it. Good Focus on the UK first. Yeah, good on niche market. We've been trying to do this for a year now, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah, when did yeah. you put launch? A year ago? Yeah. Yeah, we've I, been trying to get together for about a year now. I know, yeah. Mad. And I've been seeing he's doing numbers. I've been watching all the podcasts. Yeah, it's doing all right. Yeah. You know what? The thing is, sometimes I say mad things on podcasts that I can't even end up reposting them because I don't <laughs> like... I've got two different types of, of like um, followers, yeah? One have come from reality TV and the other half has come from business, yeah? So I'll drop a bar in a podcast about some kind of money... And the business side love it because it's inspiring. But then I'd say a quarter of the reality things are like, yeah, you fucking you're stuck up, blah, 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 blah. So I've got to be so careful what I post out on my social channels. Mm. And that's why I'm starting new channels up now where I can literally post whatever I'm feeling and talking about at the time. I don't really have to filter because with that reality spit, you have to try and be a bit sensitive. Do you know what I mean? Because the people that watch it are all different backgrounds. They ain't all going to get inspired from things you say. So this one, I'm still going to say what I want and I'm going to post this one because so, I want this one to do well, isn't it? So. Do you still have a stigma attached to you that you're not a businessman, you're a reality TV star? Um, yeah, to people that ain't got a fucking clue, of course. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I like that. Look, I, I ain't got no ego, Lou, right? As mad as it might sound. I got through into TV... When in 2012 or 14, whenever it was, I was 22, yeah? I'd come from this area. So for me, it was a laugh and it was, I don't care where I go with this, yeah? Until I got in and got my teeth into it. So what people think of me don't mean nothing because eight years ago, I was skin. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't care what anyone thinks of me. Business people... Mostly a lot of brand owners might look at me and think, yeah, they, they don't they don't they don't give me the respect that I deserve, yeah. Is that gonna affect my turnover? No, because I beat most of them in most of the stores I'm in. And I've brought the brand to the States, Canada, Australia, South Africa, and a lot of the countries I sell in and I'm top settler, they don't talk English, so they definitely don't watch Taui. So you can keep the stigma in it. Yeah. So it was something that drove me in back in the day to try and get away that stigma. But it's my story. I was to come out of reality TV and I built a big, massive brand from it. Not as big as what you built yet, but I built something big and I built something that's going to be around for a long time and I'm competing with the biggest brands in the world. So when I look at the odd comment of, yeah, you're just reality star. Yeah, whatever. I've got my own reality show now. So whatever. I come from Taui. I've got my own reality show now. And... I don't feel like I've changed much, so I don't really care what anyone says. What was the reaction from that new show that you've done versus Mad. Because I've watched your show and it's... Mad. Amazing. It's mad. Yeah. I was going to bring them today, Lou, but obviously sometimes I need a break from it. So yeah. this for me is a bit of therapy today because a lot of the time I've got a camera in my face and like the, 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 the ratings of it is crazy. So I've got Sunday at nine now. I'm the first person to have ever on ITVB apart from Taui. Wow. Is that it's, where the biggest viewers are? Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. It's Taui's had it from the start of ITVB. But Taui's um, not coming out until the end of the year now because of like the restrictions and things like that. But my one's a bit easier to film. So we've got Sunday at nine now, which is nuts. So I'm looking forward to it, man. And it's one of them ones where on, on Taui... It's filmed different to how mine is. Mine's a guy with a camera over my shoulder. So if I'm sitting there and I'll get a tax bill and I'm like, I've not expected it, 
it'll catch me at the moment opening it. So like, literally, it's my life. Everything that's going on in my life is on the show, and I don't touch anything in the edit either. It's literally what you see is what you get on there. So how, I feel is that, like, how is that mentally though? Um, I think it's fine. Like, obviously, you got to have a team around you who you can. They've got to understand that you're going to have bad days, yeah? yeah. So you're not always going to walk into the room and be in a good mood, are you? Sometimes you're going to walk in and tell them to fuck off. It's just what happens. Yeah. But they take it They take it the right way. So, like, I flew them out to Mexico with me and got engaged. And it was like they weren't there. But if you're on another reality show, there's, like, all the cameras were on sticks and things like This is one guy with a camera on his shoulder just cap capturing it. So mentally, it's good. It's, but you just got to, look... You know as much as I do, yeah, with what we do for a living. You know when you're going downhill certain ways, yeah? You know if you're getting irritable. You know if you're not happy, which a lot of the time we're not because we're always chasing this madness and I don't know why I'm doing it and why am I still here doing this today because I don't need to do it. Why am I still chasing it? You know the questions that go through your head, yeah? And what you do is, is you learn how to deal with them. You learn that if you wake up on a Monday morning and... You don't want to get out of bed. It's not going to be the best week. So dedicate your life to the gym that week and just try and stay away from work as much as you can and heal yourself for the next week so you can go in. And it's all, it's all to do with coping with it. And if you learn how to cope with it, then you've won. I feel like that's all it comes down to. I don't feel like there's anything more to it. You gotta, it's, it's not like you can put it down to depression, anxiety. It ain't. For me, it's stress. Stress is the main thing that drives me, yeah? And... It, it makes me work hard but then it breaks me at the same time so I can work really good on stress and achieve mad things but then a day later I can't handle it and I'm like oh and I've got nothing left in my body and I have to just rest it out and, and that's what I've learned how to do so if I'm get for a few days where I feel like my head's going I'll just stop yeah. and I've learned that it's the beautiful thing now you can stop and when I do stop what I do is I sleep a lot I try and eat really healthy I try and watch my little boy smile and laugh as much as he can. I walk around my house and think about how far I've come, which I don't really do a lot. And I'm ready to go again. Why don't you give yourself that pat on the back enough? I know lots of I don't deserve it. Even I don't do it. I don't deserve it. I'm not there yet. What well, I'm patting myself on the back for? Yeah. What, so I can become complacent and do what everyone else does and try and act cool? <laughs> Get out of here, man. I ain't cool. I ain't cool. I'm just... I'm just one of them guys that planned and found luck at the same time and I'm all right at earning money. I might not be good at business, but I'm fucking good at earning money, mate. I am good at earning money. Where did, so where did, where did the mallet actually come from, the mallet idea, the mallet shoe? Is that how it started as shoes? Mallet come from my family, Irish, yeah? From a council estate in Dublin called Pier Street. And unless you go there, you'd never understand. It's like a big square and... There's washing lines going across. Everyone's doors are open. And it's like, it's quite a rough part of Dublin. And all my family come from there, yeah? So when we was growing up as kids, we come from like quite a hard family. And we got given nicknames. And I got called Mallet Head because I had a small body with a big head. Oh. I'm not going to say the way she said it because it was more swearing and I need to stop swearing. I just realised, yeah? But I got called Mallet Head and a few of my cousins used to take the piss out of me, call me Mallet, and I hated it. But when I come to about 15, 16, and I started like, I'd come from boxing and training, I got a lot of confidence, yeah? So I sort of used it as, yeah, Mallet Head, yeah, you ain't taking the piss out of me now sort of thing. And what I done was, when I went on to the show, because of the background that I come from, it weren't really accepted for me to go on TV. My people was like, what, what are you doing? But then a few people was like, do it. So my real name's Tommy Fordham. So when I went on there, I didn't want to be searchable at the time. I didn't want people to dive into my stuff. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going on there and I'm just using my nickname, Tommy Mallet. Don't talk, don't use my government name ever. And I only come out last year when I had the baby. So obviously I couldn't launch a brand called Tommy Fordham because of Tom Ford. So that's where Mallet oh, come yeah. from. So when I'd done it, I kept it off the shoes for years. I didn't put the logo on the shoes. I just put it in the inner sole because... I was worried that people weren't going to buy my product if it had my name on the side of it because I'd been on reality TV. But obviously, as time went on, and with the way like, I PR'd the brand and PR'd myself to people to get the actual real me, people started like rating what I'd done. 
And that's how it started. That's exactly how it started. There's nothing more to it. It was literally, I met an agent because I weren't earning no money, yeah? And I was lending more and more money and getting into more and more debt at the time. And um, at the time, I was like struggling for car payments and only had a smart car. And that's when I was like, all right, cool. I'm on a show here, yeah? How can I be on a show showing everyone my life and I've still got no dough? This is, this is mad. So what I've done was, is I left my agent at the time because I didn't feel like I was getting brought to the front of the work um, and found a new woman. And we was discussing like bringing a business out. And it was about, I was going to bring out a plastic shoe box. You know them like plastic shoe boxes when well, they first come yeah, out? Yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, I'm glad I've never done it now because the fucking environment. What, so you were going to bring a plastic shoe box with no shoes? No shoes, just a shoe box right, because right. I used to collect shoes back in the day, right. yeah? And the shoe boxes after time used to, like, cardboard used to drop to the side. So I had a big, big... Tower. In my room, I had a big tower of shoes and they used to drop to the side, yeah? So I was like, I'm going to do that. Anyway, I ended up just... You know how it goes. You end up flowing. And I was like, it's the first time I'd ever flow, like, creatively into a business. I was like, no, no, I'm not doing that. It's too much money, blah, blah, blah. I see someone who's my business partner, Evren, on a night out, um, got chatting and he was in production. And I was like, look, it, can you make me a pair of shoes? Cause I was, I was modeling at the time for Jake at Preview, yeah? Right, okay. Cause we, we yeah. like, we started out at the same time. So I would do a few photo shoots with him and he had these slip-ons, yeah? And there was a, like, a good few hundred quid and I never had the money from him. So I was like, I want these. So I drew them myself, a different pair. And I sent him to the guy I just met. And when the sample come back, the sample was crazy. It was better than the ones that I wanted. It was six, seven hundred quid. So that's it. The rest was history. That's exactly how it started. There was nothing more about it. No planning, nothing. So was, was he a supplier? No. He lived in Turkey and he knew right, a supplier. Okay, right. And his family was in like the garment trade. So he didn't have any knowledge in shoes at the time. And nor did I. So for the first few years... You had to buy a size down because they just made them how they could at the time. Do you know what I mean? There was yeah. nothing to it. And it didn't go well for the first few years. It took a lot of work. Um, why, why? Why didn't it go um, well? Because at the time when I launched, there weren't really that many brands out there apart from the majors, innit? Like I launched in 2015. So you obviously had your things going on. MDV was going on as well, innit? Yeah. So I was wearing that when I started because I used to have a link there and what I'd done was I just like when I was adding up why it never worked I'm still thinking now why it never worked at the start because I never had a clue how to market I didn't know how to market why is someone going to buy a, a slip on from a reality start why but when until I started telling my story and learning how to design and really really going for it that's when it started popping so it was the story of how you got the shoot, which is what- I feel like the story, my, my story personally from where I come from yeah. worked because people started showing me a different level of respect. Um, getting into um, wholesale stores. I'll tell you what happened. I put an ad in GQ magazine and basically got gassed because I was in GQ, but I didn't. I paid 500 quid to get in there. And I was just in a little <laughs> bit. And one of the guys on the way to Paris Fashion Week see it in there. I was like, we're going to have a little punt at this boy. So- Choice, my local store, took a punt to me and I was doing miserably in there for ages, yeah? And then a few other stores done it. But what I'd done was, and then I released a certain shoe, yeah? But I released it on um, Black Friday, yeah? And it was all black. From that day in 2015 to today, I've been the top selling product in that store. I've never, ever gone. It's always gone up, 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 really? up, up, up. Always, always. And that was with no marketing. I didn't do any marketing until 2021. Well, was, why do you think that is? Do you think it's I didn't know what product, marketing was. Do you think it's because the product's so good? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm, I'm bringing something to the market where, look, yeah, look, I ain't going to sh- diss anyone because that's not our role because I don't need to because I don't need to diss anyone to build myself up because I feel very content with who I am, yeah? But you see, you see brands where people are too cool for school. Mm. People don't relate to it. I don't care. Is that your phone? Yeah, yeah. Just... What's that? Another million quid? <laughs> um, people down. can't. People can't relate to it. Yeah, people don't understand that. You may be doing well in hype, but hype dies. That's what hype is. So you know, when I was a hype customer and I was buying exclusive stuff, 
I would one minute wear Stone Island, then I'd wear Nike, then I'd wear Prada, then I'd wear this. But I'd never stick to one brand and be loyal, yeah? yeah? So when you're like too niche and you're cool, you lose that customer. So now when you see, for example, a terrorist customer, so someone that goes to the football, yeah? Have you noticed? They all wear like Adidas Gazelles, they all wear Stoney, and they've been wearing it for 30 years. I work that. If you can pin down that customer, they're loyal customers. That's the like, the, I, I ain't going to mention the competitor brand, but the big brand that like, everyone's been wearing for years and years and years and years, you get 70 year olds wearing it, and you get 20 year olds wearing it, you get 15 year olds, you get all different. And that's what I put my success down to. I stayed relatable. I didn't try to be too cool. I didn't come into money and start flaunting with it. I kept it easy. I kept it humble. I, I tried to stay in line with my customer at the same time. Yeah. And at the start, I feel like that really worked for me because people wanted my story to work. And that with the product that we was coming with and the price point and the time and the deliveries, then voila. How important is the price point for you? Because you're in these major shops with some big brands and you're at affordable price range. Was that the plan? It, w it was at the start, but look, and, and do you know what? I never told no one this, yeah? But I told you, I'm going to be honest with you today because I'm telling you things that I don't talk about much, yeah? What I'd done was, is I made the story of being the affordable brand because where I come from, yeah? And that got me to a level... But then when I started selling in Selfridges and I've got stores in Qatar, Saudi, Dubai, I've got stores everywhere, yeah? But people come to me and go, can you make a $3,000 shoe? And I go, yeah, I can. I know how to do that, but I can't because it goes against my story. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm in like limbo. Is prices are going through the roof for everything at the minute and all my competitors are going up to a thousand pound. But I'm standing around 200 mark, 220, yeah? To the point where I've got to be careful because you can't sell too cheap because then you become a cheap brand. So I keep my eye on the market a lot. And what I do is I just try to stay true to who I am. And I try not to take the piss. And by me doing that, I get the volume and I still get a decent margin out of it because I don't think it's all about margin. Mm. It's more so seeing people wear my stuff. Yep. That's all I care about. And really. the frequency of how, how often they're wearing it too. Listen, my, my orders, my order book goes through the roof. You've seen my numbers, yeah? Because yeah. you told me you've seen my numbers, yeah? <laughs> my order book is always doubling. So I'm doing something right, ain't I? Instead yep. of sitting there and going, well, well we've got to put the prices up. Why am I even going to get distracted about putting prices up and worrying how we look when the order book's doubling? But it's been doubling for six years now. So it's a bit of a different business model. A lot of it is based off my, the way that I was brought up and the, who I want to be as a person. So yeah, it's a bit different. Do you know what it is for me? And I'm going to be honest with you. When I, when I see, let's say, people selling online or influencers or whatever, they'll sell online. I'll, ch I'll check the accounts and... I have no expectations of what they're going to do because most of the time, they're frauds. Nearly all the time. I went on your accounts and as I said to you, <laughs> this guy is doing serious numbers. But, yeah. You know, you won't say it yourself, but this guy is doing some serious numbers. So, But, the but, thing it's, but I, it's not where you want to be, is it? No, do you know what is, Lou, yeah? Right, let's put it this far. But no one's broke it down this way for you. You ready for this one, yeah? yeah? You're a lot richer than me, yeah? Like, you can go and grab more money than me. I'm not going to go into figures because I don't like talking figures, yeah? But if I sold my business, then it's a different story, yeah? It's probably still not going to be as rich as you, but still. What's the difference between me and you? Absolutely nothing. I've got a hat on you, in. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. Did you wake up early this morning because the baby woke you up? Yep. Fucking hard, didn't it? Yeah, three times. Yeah, how's the money help you? Didn't, did it? Nope. No. How are you feeling at the minute? Are you happy? <laughs> good, good. Yeah? Tired. Good. Exactly, yeah. bruv. So what's the difference between me and you? Yeah. There's no difference between me and you. Both done well for ourselves. Both comfortable, both can look after our families, which is amazing. But when there's no ego attached to it, yeah, you're no different to me. Because I can't allow that to happen anyway. So even if you did, I'll laugh about it. Because I know people with billions, fucking millions, whatever, we're all the same. And I like that about you, yeah? Because I've been in contact with you for a long time. And I always thought, I always wondered how you was going to be. Without the, without the cameras on you. And I come in and you're one of the boys. So I am feel quite, I'm, I'm happy that like, my expectations was met. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why I'm the way I am. Because I know I do figures. And I know that my business is banging. But it's banging today, isn't it? 
we don't know where we're going to be tomorrow, do we? Mm. I've, lucky enough, I got through Brexit and COVID, yeah? Which was challenging. Now we've got this mad price point stuff. And now we've got a war on our hands as well, yeah? I'm just happy that I can get through it. And that's the answer to you, Lou. That's, yeah. that's how I feel right now. I've, you know it is when you have a baby, innit? You have a baby and that's all that matters now. The money's a bonus. But I want to use that. I want to really make sure we use that. Me and you are the same. 100%. I love it. I, and I love the way, I just love how open you are. I say yeah. it all the time. Uh, if anyone wants to give you advice, you know, you'll happily accept it. Please. You'll, you'll ask people, you know, you straight away to Ali, well, where are you from? You ask them about themselves. Yeah. Like, people don't do that anymore. They're so interested in themselves and heading phone, you know, doing their own thing. They don't even care about other people, which isn't human, is it? Do you want to know where that come from? Yeah. Uh, so, bro, I'm dropping things here. Yeah, that I've never spoken about. I swear to you, I've never, ever spoken about none of these things, yeah? And I'll be honest with you all. The reason I come in and I make sure, right, so for example, you come in and said, yeah, yeah, Ali. So I was like, oh, Ali, where are you from? Because obviously I wanted to know, I want to know about him. And the reason I've done that, yeah, is when I first went on TV and I first started meeting famous people and rich people, I realised one thing. They talk about themselves for hours mm. and they don't give a shit about nothing about you. And I'm not going to drop the names, but the people who are like people's champions in the UK, you think daytime telly, most beautiful, lovely people, they speak so nice to people. When you meet them and you, you sit there with them, they don't ask nothing about you. You're nothing to them because they've made their way through the ropes and they're like big in the TV industry. And it didn't make me feel good. And I like feeling good. And I like others feeling good around me. I like people to leave and go, do you know what? Breath of fresh air, that geezer. It's made me feel good today. So I always told myself after doing my first bit of daytime TV or it was Celeb Juice or whatever it was, make sure that you talk about others more than you talk about yourself because no one wants someone that talks about themselves all the time. I've come on the podcast to tell my story, but I'm incorporating you into it because yeah. I don't want to talk about myself because yeah. you're probably more interested than me. I know I've watched three podcasts. I know you ask a lot of questions, but I'm trying to keep them off me. I know, exactly. <laughs> but you're interesting too. Yeah. And if you put both our stories together, then you've got double the inspiration, yeah. innit? Yeah. Don't sit there and become one of them people because you've earned, I'm talking about myself, because you've earned a few quid. Now you feel like you've got the right to just lyric about your life to everyone. No one cares that much. Anyone can earn money. It comes luck, preparation, timing. Like, yes, it comes to the point where you need to put more work in than anyone. But that's your own obsession that brings you there, yeah? You ain't no better than anyone. You know what I do? And it's another thing. I don't put nothing like this on social media because I don't do it for that. But there's a part in the Bible, yeah? And I'm going to quickly tell you, and probably no one's ever lyriced about a Bible. It's 11.11, by the way. It's just as I've gone in there. <laughs> Two seconds. Um, there's a bit in the Bible, yeah? Um, Bible. Listen to this. And this is this has been a big part of my life. So I'm dyslexic, sorry, innit? So obviously I'm not going to be able to read it to how it says and I'm going to probably remax it. So that's Corinthians 9, 6, 8. Remember this, whoever sells sparingly will also reap sparingly and whoever sells generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, yeah? So obviously... I look at things and I take it and I and I live my life by it, yeah? So I ain't got any on me today because I give them away, but I, I carry £50 notes. And what I do with the £50 notes is I make sure when I get a feeling in my belly if someone needs it, I give it to them. And that's what I do constantly. Like obviously to an extent because I've not got that much money, but if I see someone and it, I get a gen, gen, genuine feel about them that they need help homeless people, stuff like that, I give them 50 quid. And the reason I do it is I do it so, number one, that I can connect with other people, yeah? Because the eyes don't lie, yeah? When you give someone something and you actually see what you've helped them, it makes you feel better and it helps you, doesn't it? Yeah. And that's one thing I've stuck to doing, is giving a lot away. And that's probably why I'm like this. 
it's amazing. I saw that uh, I help. Do- I, listen, I, I help dogs. I love dogs. I mean, yeah, you've got good. a dog called Simba. I've, my dog's called Simba. Yours is the Pomeranian. Monkey. What? Mine is. Oh, monkey. Mine's called, called monkey. Because he looks like Simba. Right, yes. Yeah, so mine's called Simba as well because he looks like you've Simba. You've got a Sharpay low, innit? No, I've got a Chow Chow. Chow Chow. Chow the one with a black tongue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sick chow, dog. Chow, so. Nah, but Sam, I just love dogs, so all the local blue crosses I help them out and stuff. That, it's good, that's good, isn't it? That makes me feel good. I don't. I almost feel guilty spending money on myself. That makes yeah, sense. Same, yeah. Which is crazy. Which you make all this money, what? So you can't then treat yourself. It's mad, I just isn't like it? to spend it on other people. It makes me feel better going on trips with other people. I don't like to go anywhere alone. I want to give everyone the experience I can have. Yeah. I don't give it just myself. I give it to other people. But listen. But then on the other part, and then fuck the humble shit now. Yeah, we can go out and buy cars. And I like cars. And I like putting my foot down and hearing noise. That's my little bit of fun. But when I go back to where I'm from, I don't drive them cars. How did I get here today? Walked. Do you know why I walked? Because I'm from around here. I wouldn't drive my, my car through here. Because I don't want to like, put it in people's faces. I don't drive my cars around where I come from. I park my car at my office and I walk. That's why I do it. What cars you got? Um, I've got um, G63. Um... I've got SLS, an, you? I got an SLS. Yeah. Um, I got a V8 Defender, the Carpathian edition, the right. new one, right. five litre. Um, and I've got another G wagon. Nice. Yeah. And yeah. Then I bought, I've got a Range Rover Sport as well. Right. SLS. Where, where, where's that now? What's the price of that now? Because I was looking at them a long, long time ago. Like, you're looking at like 180s now, yeah, isn't it? I think it's like 112 when I was looking. Don't make me sick, man. I swear down. It's hey, like, I know, I'm probably, remember, probably even I'm less remember. than that. I think it, that you could get them for 80, 80 to 90. I learned a good lesson with this, yeah? Um, so basically, I always wanted the SLS. Always, since I see one in 2010, yeah? And I had the money to buy an SLS for quite a long time. But I basically got obsessed with making sure that I had a certain bit of money in the bank because I was scared of losing everything. So what I done was, when I first looked at the SLS, I paid 40 grand more for it a year later, because yeah. I didn't act then. And I only started learning about that late um, in the last year, about like how inflation can damage your fucking net worth and blah, blah, blah. So I went out and bought that car, and that's gone up by 10% since I've had it. Yeah. I bought it in September. And I don't drive it, I just got it parked up. And for me, that was something that I wanted. I bought it, and I've not driven it, but I know I've got it, and I'm nice and like, appreciate an asset. The same with like a lot of the other cars that I drive. I only, I don't buy anything that loses money. Right. I can't. I can't do it. I've still got that thing inside me, innit? I love to make sure I've got equity and stuff. It makes me happy. Would you invest in anything else? Houses? You own um, house, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't invest in um, anything digital, as I said earlier, because I don't know enough about it. And because I'm dyslexic, um, obviously, I said to you earlier, I'm a trader, innit? I'm good at earning money. But I don't... Uh, mate, I'll just get obsessed with the numbers and looking at the apps and all these NFTs and shit like that. Like, bruv, I can't read enough about it because I can't. So I'm not going to know enough about it for me to become an expert. And unless I'm an expert, I'm not messing with it. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm an expert at other things. So, yeah, I, I mess around with property and things like that, but I don't flip it. I just invest my money. And do you know what is, Lou, yeah? I earn enough money annually out of my business at the minute. And my business is growing at such a fast rate. I don't really feel like I need to go too heavy on other little bits and pieces because it will take my attention away from it. But if I float or sell in the next five years, yeah, then then that's my that's what I'll do in my life, innit? I'll start investing. Yeah. Because I watch what you do. You had a million quid out of some NFTs or something, didn't it? Yeah, it was uh, something called VV, and then but. I didn't take them. I don't take the money out, but I invest all my money. As soon as I get any money, I invest it all into the markets. I invest into so like if you were to ask me how many companies do I own, well, technically I own like forty-five different companies because I own a piece of all the public, well, a lot of public companies. Um, but if I was going to give you advice to invest your money, I'd say just invest in the Vanguard and just invest in Vanguard. The S&P, Who's that? The S and P five hundred. So Van, Vanguard are one of the biggest companies in the world. They they look after every almost everyone's money, similar to like BlackRock. If you invest in the S&P 500, you're literally tracking the market. You'll probably beat 95% of people. Your money will go up over an average of 10% uh, over the course of your lifetime every single year. That's good. So what you should do for your little boy as well, which is what I've just done, is you can set up a nine grand ISA in Vanguard and literally invest that. So if you put nine grand every year, I think it works out to about 150K by the time they're 18. It'll be worth, it's worth like 
I think it's about 400 grand, somewhere in the region of that, by the time they're 18. So I'll be honest with you, yeah. So I buy little assets, innit, yeah. that can move about, and I don't have anything near me, because I don't like looking at things. I don't have everything plotted up places. I know I can put, like, nine grand a year away from, from my little boy. I, I don't want to give him no money when he's 18. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I'm going to pay for him to go private school. That's his education. That's all he's getting off me. Yeah. And that sounds mad, but I know a lot of people with rich parents, yeah? And they level, they've got a level of entitlement. And I hate entitlement because entitlement's not right. You shouldn't be think that you're entitled to anything in life because you're not, because it's borrowed, isn't it? So, and that sounds really harsh. He ain't getting set up so he thinks he's got 150K when he's 18. What's he going to buy 150K? Go out and get it like I did. I'm being honest with you here. It's true, it's true. He ain't getting it. Yeah. So... I'm at that stage now where I can plot assets up, little bits and pieces. Um, I'm, at, I'm going to Mallorca in the morning because I'm buying sand out there at the minute. And obviously that all goes to my kids, yeah? It goes to my kids when I die, hopefully when I'm 90, if all goes well, yeah? I ain't going to let some little blonde kid run around the streets, yeah, thinking I've got 150 grand coming to me when I'm 18. It ain't happening. Because I didn't. I had to buy all my own stuff. And I need to teach him the way I was brought up because our kids are going to grow up wealthy, yeah? How, how are you going to stop them from becoming brats? I'm going to make sure, well, I'm hopefully going to teach her, teach her the correct mannerisms, everything like that. If, if, I've always said this, if I get to the point where she's, let's say, 18 and she ain't, she's not the person I wanted to be or anything like that, as you said, they won't, they won't get nothing from me. Yeah, no, Absolutely unbelievable. Absolutely nothing. The, so the best way I think of doing it, yeah? Is if you're gonna do it, I'm I'm never gonna let him know because when I moved from London to Essex, I started meeting people with rich families, yeah, and the majority of the kids ain't got no drive. Sorry if you got a rich family and you're watching this, yeah. I don't mean anything against you. I'm just saying from my own experience, yeah. A lot of the kids that I met who come from wealthy backgrounds who knew that they had a trust fund, yeah didn't have much drive yeah. because they knew that they had it, yeah? But then if you meet the kid from the estate who wants to get his mum off the estate, that's where the drive's built, yeah? And that's where it, and that's where the real mindset's built. Yeah. So I'm trying, I'm toying with the thing where I want Brody to have an unbelievable life, but I don't want him to grow up entitled. So I'm going to tell him from early, yeah? His inheritance is his education. I'm going to pay for his best education that he can get. But when he gets to 18, show me how good you are going out and getting it. Yeah. And, and, and that's my view on it. I know it sounds mad and it might be a bit old fashioned, Lou, but just that's how I feel with it, man. No, it's true. It's true. But I don't see, it'll be hard for him to grow up like that because you're not like that. Do you know what I'm saying? I, yeah. think, I think people are a reflection, obviously kids are a reflection of their parents and obviously, yeah. and their surroundings too. And no one I'm even friends with is ever, has ever felt or is entitled. Everyone's still on their grind. I'm never going to stop just like you're never going to yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah. The money keeps getting reinvested. How much money is enough money? Well, I want all the money in the world yeah, because yeah, that's yeah. what I, I strive for success and success brings the money. Yeah. Um, so there's nothing that's kind of going to stop me. What's, what's, your, what's your best advice to someone that wants to start a company? Can right I ask now? you a question first? Go on. Why do you want all the money in the world if it doesn't make you happy? It's, it, it's, it's, it's the process of getting to that stage because it's really fucking hard. There's nothing easy about it. But if I had it easy, I'd probably go insane. Do you know what I mean? Thanks, I needed that. It, 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 it's, it's, it's the whole entire process. Like, I don't know how to get all the money in the world, but fuck me, I'm going to love trying. Do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's hard. So that's why I like that thought. No, no, good. No, I wanted to know for myself because I'm asking myself the same question. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like when, when you, when you, but get you to couldn't s switch off, could you? Could you switch off and just go and live a happy, happy, happy life? Just sit on the beach? No, you couldn't, brother. I just walked there and I was walking ten mile an hour. Yeah, so fast, and I'm, I'm early. Why am I rushing for? And I don't know why. I've got a screw loose. <laughs> yeah, and I just love winning. It don't have to be money. It, I don't know what it is. A pound, I'll take a pound win. I don't give a shit. I'll bet a pound with you now on time. If you want to bet, I'll have a bet on a pound. I don't like gambling. But I would love to have a pound off of you for some reason. Just because I feel like I beat you in some way that day. Well, I've only got card. Yeah, no, don't worry about it. I've got a card machine. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like that, that's my mindset. It's not about, I don't know what it is. I've just got this thing in me where You're I love knowing I'm not competitive in sport or nothing. Right, right. I just love to know that like, um, I can look back and go, oh, I had a touch today. Right. That's all it is for me. Yeah. It's mad. It's like a game. And I, I don't know why I'm like it, but the more I sit down with people like you, and this is why I do podcasts, yeah? Because it's therapy for me because I want to know that it's not just me. Do you know what I mean? 
And I sat down with a, with a guy the other day, he's 87, and he started Reebok. And he was telling me how he's doing this, this, and this. And I was like, brother, are you mad? Do you not want to turn off? And he's like, nah. I went, wow, I need to go back and think on, on this and realise if that's what I want. Because I'm looking for peace as well. And I don't think you can get both of them, innit? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. What, what's, your, what's your best advice for someone that wants to start a business but it's on the fence? Because there's a lot of them people, they want to read books and get all the motivation in the world. Don't start. It? Don't start. No. Because wh- why are you on the fence for? You no. can't be on the fence in business. How much do you want it? You can't be on the fence about wanting something, can you? Uh, what's your next car? Mine. What you want? I don't want one. Oh, lovely. So you're content with that, yeah? Yep. So, all right, let me think of another... In, Too uh, much hassle. That, it's a little bit hard you get in a Too better much car than what you've already got. All right, so something that you want, yeah? And you can't think about every day. If you want something, you think about it mostly every day, don't you? It comes yep. in your mind, doesn't it? You know, like when we were younger and all our ambitions and dreams for the business? Yeah. Was you ever on the fence about it? What the fuck? I didn't even think about that. Well, go back to sleep if you're on the fence then and wake up in a different fucking headspace. Because if yeah. you're on the fence, unless there's something really stopping you from doing it and there's no way of doing it, then whatever, be on the fence. But if you've got an ambition and you're on the fence about your own ambition, how the hell can you expect anyone to invest in what you're doing? Because you're not even serious about it. So stop reading motivational books. Stop fucking posting how many times you're rich, rich, rich dad, poor dad, and go out and go and get it. People are making power moves. Do not talk about power moves. That's how it works. That, I'm not coming here today telling you my next step because people's energy can fuck the trial. Yeah? Tunnel vision. That's me. I'm in it. I'm just going for it. Yeah? I'll tell you what I've just achieved last week, but I'm not telling you what I'm achieved next week. I'm not telling you that because you might put a bit of doubt in my head by something and you might make me start doubting myself. But how can I doubt you? You come from nothing and look at you. No, but if I start telling you the way I'm going to do something, yeah, you might go, oh, what about if that happens? So I don't want to know where I'm going here, yeah? Because, yeah, I might fail doing it, but I have got no doubt in my mind that I'm going to try as hard as I can and I'll outwork most people. And I know it's very hard for me to say that, yeah? I could work for 48 hours, no sleep, straight up, just yeah. full on, my head going. You can tell I'm not normal. I'm not the normal person. So on the fence is not in my vocabulary. I don't understand it. Don't get it. Because I sit back and I think to myself, all right, on the fence, most of mum and dad's arguments back in the day was about money. How can I give Brody a better life? Make sure... Like I'm stable, so I don't have to argue about money with Georgia. And Georgia's comfortable and she can bring up my son. I've got so much stuff in the back of my head, which is the part of your brain where you it starts off, I forgot the name of it. So there's two parts of your brain, yeah? The one in the back back is where all of the memories and all of the madness that went on when you was a kid stores there. And with a lot of therapy, yeah, of me thinking I was mad, I have actually learned. And that's what inspires you. I look back at me and... I can't, I can't relate to anyone as saying they want to start a business because they're on the fence. Go and get a job, man. You ain't cut out for it. That's the answer. You're not cut out if you're asking that question. Yeah, it's a hard, hard, hard long road as well. Whoa, yeah. Fucking tight my laces and go and do it. Yeah. And foul. Foul, 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 foul. Because like, all them knows is build a big mountain with them and then stand at the top when you get a yes. And then show everyone that you got a yes, because that's always based off it. Have you always been built this way, this this I can mentality? No, 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 no. Um, I was built um, off of quite a negative mindset because my brother's got um, the best grades in the UK and a master's or whatever he's got or a first class honours in what he does. My brother's the smartest person I've ever met. Really? And so my dad. Really? My dad... Obviously, he's got a bit of bad luck here and there with what he did, having two kids and being where we're from. And for me, I didn't know anyone who went to university growing up. No one where I'm from went to university. It's not a thing. It's not a thing where, I, where it is now, but where I grew up, university is not a thing. Growing up, it was go to, go to school, either go to school, do well, smash it, go to university, get a mortgage, pay the mortgage off, What's that thing called when, when you're waiting to die and they give you a few quid every month? Um, pension. A pension. Get a pension and then retire and then 
So yeah, and then and then your kid gets your house, and that's it. You're a success. I'm looking at it thinking, nah, bruv, because my dad's mad stressing me. That's not what I, I I don't see with eyes. But then the other bit was, leave school, put your name down on the council, the local council, get a council house, get a job at the council, and then you're, you've got a job, and then you've got a low rent, and you've got a low paid job, but you can get on with it. I didn't really get none of that. And I felt useless for so long, yeah, because I got, I got involved in a lot of madness growing up, yeah. But when I was involved in the madness, I didn't want to be in that madness because I didn't feel right. I felt like I needed to do right by my parents. And then when I was a labourer, and then when I was... No, do you know what? When I was started doing architecture, do you know where it come from? Come from this, yeah? So my brother's a surveyor, yeah? My mum wanted me to follow my brother's footsteps. Right. I failed everything in school, couldn't get into college to become a su surveyor. My head teacher took me to college and got me into the course, saying I'm a good kid, blah, blah, blah. I used to sell fags in school. They respected that, yeah? When I got there, I couldn't do algebra. I couldn't read until I was 21 properly, and I couldn't do maths until I was 25. But now I'm fucking good at it because I've taught myself because I just needed a different way of learning, yeah? Anyway, these guys in work bullied me so bad, right? They was all posh. They took the piss out of our spoke. They used to make racist remarks. Yeah, about the way I spoke and where I come from. And they treat me like shit. And they used to go, oh yeah, go and make tea. Or if I was reading the paper, we'd pretend I was reading the paper to fit in, take the paper and throw it. Go and pick that up. But what happened was, yeah, I was like, all right, fuck this. I'm going to not kill him, one of these geezers. So I'm out of here. I'm bouncing. And I went down the wrong road for a year, yeah. And my, my dad used to come in from work and I was still in bed at like one o'clock. And I, I had no ambition, nothing. But I always knew I was going to be a millionaire at that stage still. I just didn't know I was going to get there. I then took it on myself to then do labouring, building. And then I went to try to do the surveying to prove these guys again wrong. And I couldn't do it, yeah? And then I, it hit, I went and got in the headlights and I was like, rabbit in headlights. I was like, wow, I'm 20 this year. What am I doing? Got to 21. A few of the boys, a few a bit of madness happened and I got offered to go on Tawi. I said no for ages, yeah? Didn't want to do it. Fuck Essex. I'm not from Essex. One day, I ended up doing it, yeah? When I got on there, I started feeling a bit of the ambition because I'd see the rich people and the house that I built. You know the story, yeah? But then when I went on TV, I lost the ambition again because I started smoking fags and drinking, yeah? And I'd never done that. It wasn't my thing. It's always quite healthy. But because of the schedules of filming, smoking, drink, drinking, blah, 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 they don't do that no more because it's not how it is now. But what I'd done was I thought it was all going to come to me and I, I, I got a bit of entitlement. Oh, I'm on TV now. I'm getting PAs in clubs. I'm going to get £2,000 an hour. I got like two in it. And no one wanted me because I had the missus. But I didn't feel sorry for myself. I then started learning that there was more to me than what I thought. And I can't get written off so early because, I, because of my learning difficulties. I can be someone. I am strong. I am powerful. I have got an aura. I can make the best out of a bad situation here, yeah? Because trust me, even though I was on TV, it was a bad situation. I had nothing. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going for it. And as I kept I won one thing and then another thing and another thing and when it started winning the no's become laughable I ended up wanting no's because I was getting so many yeses I was like this don't feel right give me a no man and then my mindset after that I don't know what happened man but it's just different it's just different what is your advice for other people that you know are dyslexic or, or struggle to learn in s different ways because as, as I said well certain ways i.e. school is only taught in one way you said you learnt from business and you could learn maths you know probably pretty easy so what is your best advice so you're probably one of the luckiest people in the world because you're not going to be caught in a rat race you're going to go the other way because you fucking can't tell where it says left or right yeah. so you're just going wherever <laughs> you're lucky because the way that we're taught, if you ask someone who has become a huge success, they've never lived by the way they're taught. Because what's that Pythagoras theory or saying? That circle thing with some numbers in. Who the fuck can I never use that in my life, mate? You mad? You don't need that to count a million quid. Nah, tell us how you're going to do a tax return. Tell us how you're going to do this. Tell us how you're going to do this. Change it so when you leave school that everyone has a chance. How do you apply for a mortgage? How do, no, you don't get taught all that stuff. No. Yeah? So you got, as everyone's got to learn that, but my main advice is this, yeah? 
you've been blessed with saying here, because I know it sounds mad, and this is the way I look at it. I weren't taught the same as everyone else, so I'm a different breed, I feel, because I've had to teach myself a different way of doing it. So with me being a different breed, I don't take no for an answer, and I don't weigh up the situation to say as someone who is educated. So my brother would weigh this thing up and then act. I'd act and then weigh it up after. And with being dyslexic, that's one thing that you do. You take different risks because you go around things a different way. Yeah. And I think it's a blessing, man. Obviously, it's hard because you don't want to be able to... You can't stand up in front of people and read, but you can get taught. And it gives you more fire in your belly, innit? Because yeah. no one can write you off in life. No one, man. You can't be written off by anyone. And, that, and that's my main advice. You've got to work harder, but you're different, innit? Yeah. Because you look at things in different ways. And if you can look at things in different ways and break it down different to someone else and there's 20 people going for the same thing, you've got a better chance of doing it yourself because they're all doing it the same. You've done it different and you're going to win. So that's my advice for anyone who's dyslexic, don't feel clever, um, feels useless. I've been there. I've been there. I felt useless. I felt shit. I felt skin. I felt rich. I felt skinny. I felt fat. I've been through the motions. And every single time, the only way I've got myself out of it is by making my mind strong. So if you've got a strong mind then you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Do you think so five A to C is going to help? No. Fucking, I'm going to laugh, mate. I've, I've got E, D, F. No, E, G, F I got. E, G, F. I need to put it on a shoe, actually. About fudge. No, no, no. <laughs> it was worse. It was worse. It was worse. I only got three. I couldn't. I didn't get I didn't get the rest. I only got three. So I spelled F. <laughs> I just fucked it up. Like. So, yeah, that's my advice. So, so what, what do you do, even in business, you know, you're going you're gonna to take your business to, to this place. How do you know the next steps? What are you doing to find out the next steps? Um... If anything, because I'm talented at build, building something like what I'm doing. And I feel like I'm setting my own path. I'm not really in the same league as anyone else, if what? you think about it. So big brands I've got big respect for, especially the ones up north that have smashed it. Um, your one being one of them. Manny Duvar being one of them. I'm different. I don't, I'm di like, the other people have been on this podcast, all the cool cats and all that, yeah? I'm in a different league. I'm chasing after big department stores and I don't celebrate one with a party. I didn't get sacks New York and go and party. I wanted 10 more saxes. And then when I got the saxes, I wanted uh, David Jones in Australia and I'd done that. And then I wanted Canada and I'd done that. That's why I'm different because I'm not doing this seasonally and I'm not doing this. I'm not celebrating the wins. I'm celebrating the wins of another win. That's why I'm different. And I don't know. You tell me. How long, do you, how long do you want Tommy Mallet to last as a brand? Um, I'm not too caught up on all that, to be honest with you. Okay. I'm more caught up on how quick I can get to where I want to be. Yep. How can I make sure that when I feel satisfied, that's it. There's no ego, in it? It mm. ain't about how long um, people talk about me. I don't give a fuck if people talk about me or not. I don't care. Do you know what I mean? I can leave today fulfilled is I've had enough attention. Yeah. I've got attention from 22, man. Like, I don't need to do this for fame. I've had fame, innit? Fame's shit. I ain't bother about fame. That's the answer. I don't know because when I wake up one day and think, all right, I've opened enough stores and I've made an impact on enough kids' life for them to go out and go and get it and I stop, start getting bored of seeing people going, I've got your shoes on, then I'll stop. But there ain't no other thing in place for it. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. weird, isn't it? Yeah. Quite a weird geezer, don't you think? But, no, you're good. You're good. What's what is what is fame like? Look, like, fame. What is it like? Because people tell you think it's, it's, like, it's yeah. glorious. It's success. No, no, no. Success. Fame, fame. Yeah. I don't look at myself as a celebrity. I'll never look at myself as a celebrity because I'm not. I'm not a celebrity. I'm well known in the UK, and I see a lot of guys from businesses chasing fame. Yeah, and it's embarrassing because fame is when you can walk into a fucking club. And have 5,000 people there to see you. That's fame, yeah? People buying a few pages of your brand ain't famous, man. Chill. It's a whole different board game. And I got brought into it quick, yeah? So, like, I'd open shopping centres at one point. Or I'd go to a club and... Or I'd go and speak in front of fucking hundreds of... Or, like, thousands of people. That side of it's nice, yeah? For an extent. But then there's the part of it, yeah? Is... Do you want to go on holiday and take your top off, yeah? And you're not in shape and you just want some time to yourself. Someone will take a picture of you and then it's in a magazine a week later. Or 
I want to walk down the street and people are stopping me. And like, why are you walking down the street? Why are you on the train? What do you mean why I'm on the train? I'm a fucking normal person, yeah? <laughs> that part of it is tough, isn't it? Because you can't switch off. Always on. You've got to be so careful with everything you do. You've got to be careful what you say. You can't have a bad day. You can't have a bad day. Like, I made a lot of mistakes in my life, yeah? Which probably will come and haunt me one day, innit? I'm at peace with that, whatever. Sell the story, man. I don't give a fuck. That part of it is disgusting. It's disgusting. Have you done tank in life that you regret, yeah? Uh, probably. You're not perfect, yeah? So you have. Of course not. You've done, probably gone out on a night out before. Yeah, yeah. And been an idiot and had a piss in the doorway or something. Whatever. Um, imagine that and someone had probably filmed you doing that and was holding it against you to say, I'm going to sell it to the papers. Give me 10 grand. Yeah. Or imagine wow. someone's like, oh, you was at a certain party and this happened. Or you know them people there and them people are doing this. Imagine that all the time. I've, who, who am I no more? Uh, who am I? Nah, sorry. Who am I? I don't know who I am because I can't be myself all the time. Yeah. This is me. But if I go to an event when there's journalists, I can't be me because I'll say the wrong thing because that's me, isn't it? So I'm thankful for the opportunities that I've been given in my life, yeah? And I'm thankful that like, I've got a lot of love and respect from people who generally mean it. And that means a lot to me. But the other part where people think they can just come up to me where I'm shopping my kid and put their arm around me, say, get a selfie from our missus. That's hard, isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. I go, who are you talking to? Yeah. Don't fucking touch me. You mad. But then when the little girl comes over, the little boy and goes, oh, we've, we watch you on TV. That's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. And you go, oh, hello, how are you, mate? And when I can use my fame to help other people, that's amazing. But there's really dark bits to it, man. Really dark bits to it, which... I'm not going to complain about it because I've done really well from it. But, yeah, man, it can, it can do come. The, do you think that the fame's made you mentally stronger? I don't know what put me in this mindset, you know. I don't know where it was. Because you are relentless. Relentless, mate. Relentless. Scary relentless. And I, and I don't think people understand that about me. And I, I don't need them to because, look, if people can watch this and they're going to take something from it and they're going to win, I'm, I've got a job done. If you're going to watch it and hate on me... I couldn't give a fuck. Yeah. Yeah? Because I've gone through the ranks of having hate so much. Twitter back in the day was a, a fucking war zone, mate. Yeah? Maybe that could have done it to me. Maybe a few things that nearly ruined my career along the way. Yeah? No, I've never spoken around. Me being in situations I shouldn't have been in. And it was touch and go whether my career was done. Um, yeah, it must have been, man. It, I don't know. It must have been. But where would you be if you... Didn't have business. Um, probably a lot happier, I'd oh, say. Yeah, probably a lot happier. If um, if I never had a business, I have, like, one minute I'm really happy because I'm loving the business and the next minute I'm just pissed off with it and I'm like, ah, everything's going wrong. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And then, it's just, you know how it is, man. I don't know. I, I'm really happy with what I've achieved, but I'm bored at the same time because... I'm become that good at it. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? Without sounding flash. It's true. Yeah. I, I, as much as people, and I keep referring back to the cool part of it. As much as people look at it and don't take me serious, I'm out selling everyone in the UK in stores. I've held my own in some of the biggest stores in the world for years. So it does get a part of it. You know, when things are going well, he's like, you expect it, don't you? And then you get the bit of shit that goes with it. You end up just focusing on the shit in the end because you know that you're doing well. So yeah. you don't, you forget to realise how well you've actually done. So sometimes I'd think I was probably be a little bit happier. And sometimes I want to slap myself and say, shut the fuck up. You don't know where you, you remember where you come from. That's the only answer I can give. And the only other answer I could give, I see a guy on the way home from um, work, yeah, every day the same time, he walks out of his house and he's just got a normal house and his skis are so happy. He's got like a normal car, normal house. His skis are so happy and he makes me smile every time I see him. And I look at him thinking, wow, I bet you're just so normal, innit? How does that feel? I don't know how it feels to be normal. You don't know how it feels either, I suppose. Well, it depends what your class is normal. Like, what is normal? Well, like, like, what's normal? All right, someone knows how much they're getting paid weekly. 
Someone that knows how much their bills are going to be. Someone that has a normal life. But to them, that's probably not normal and they want to be sat where you are. No, you I know that. I know smart. that. I know that. I know that. But I've been in both sides and I've been at the poverty side as well with it, which is mad, yeah? Uh, and my head, I don't know the answer to it. So I don't know where my happiness is. So I've got to try and not to you're be... Almost, you're almost too smart for your own good. You know what I mean? Because you think of so many different things. It's mad, isn't it? You think of so many different like, avenues. Literally, yeah. I was telling a story the other day. So where I come from in Island, and we was like the rich family where we grew up. And I grew up with some like people with big names, yeah? I'm not even going to name them, but big names. Like one of them, I went to school with Daniel Kaluda, yeah? Who is a Hollywood actor. Yeah, I see your head turn. You know he is, yeah? He was the, like, he's huge in America, Black Panther, Get Out, all these big films, yeah? If you see our journey to school on the bus, you wouldn't believe we're the same people. Like, some of the shit that like, we've seen and been through and all the madness that we've been through growing up, it's like, I've been through both stages. So, like, I feel like I'm so wise to life all of a sudden, innit? Yeah. Because now I've experienced both. And I, I don't know where it is, man. I might just be a, becoming a bit of a monk, bruv. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because when you talk to me, it's a bit mad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But it's true, you have to, yeah, but you have to go through all these little things in life to then start learning. And obviously, you're what, 29? 29, yeah. 29, yeah, Sam's me. And I feel like I've been through a lot. And I know that listening to your story, well, I've listened to a few podcasts, your stories, and you've been through a hell of a lot too. Yeah, but, but all, all happy though. Like, I had a really good childhood, innit? And, and, and I take my heart off to mum and dad. And like, I had a phone call from my dad about saying, saying so and so, like, there's a situation going on. I've been there before. What can you do? And, yeah. I, and, and I'm blessed that I can help people. But do you know one of the stories I always look back at, yeah? Is, and that's, that sounds mad. And sometimes I think, was it real or not? Yeah. My first ever memory of what I can remember is my mum having a piggy bank in my house and smashing it and getting the, like, the money out of it and taking it to our local Sainsbury's so she could buy a new pair of work shoes. And I thought that was normal. Yeah. And that is normal. Do you know what I mean? That is yeah. normal for day to day people where we come from. But then my dad done really well for himself. And I think seeing that sort of thing has just shaped me into a different person because I've got such a like a heart to seeing people and I want to be normal. I you know what I want to be. I want to be accepted, Lou. That's what I want. By who? People where I'm from. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to lose contact of who I am. Right. And it's so easy to do so. Like It's so easy with everything that I've got going on. But isn't it hard to be accepted by people that don't truly understand what you, you're yeah, going through and what you're going it, on? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it is. I, can, I understand what you're trying to say, but yeah. people that don't understand what you're, you're going through and what you're trying to create. Look, I want people to, to... When people talk about me, yeah? I want people... And I shouldn't care what people think to this extent, but I do. I only care about a certain amount of people. I want them to look at me and say, he didn't change after everything he achieved when they tell my story. Because I met so many wankers. And I don't want to be like that. Yeah. So that's why I'm so... Why but I if am. those people truly mean that much to you and truly love you, they're going to do that no matter what. Yeah, yeah, them, they are. But I know a lot of people. And it ain't about just people who know me, but people who watch my journey. It's so easy for me to change right now. And I'm so different to the guy I am when I started Talwin when I was 22, yeah? I don't want people to look at me and go, oh, he become above himself. Do you know what I mean? But it's going to be hard to please those people. The I second know. you don't reply to one message or you're thick, yeah. they're so fickle. If you don't reply to one text message because you're busy with your now kids, you know what I'm saying? I'll like, change my number in my Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to. Their mindset will just change. It's, yeah. You can't please everyone. It's mad, bro. Like, I'm, 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 as much as it looks like I'm a success and I've built this thing, and I'm still searching myself it yeah of what i want to be yeah and i'm not going to sit here and say i've got all the answers i've just got a lot of enthusiasm and i've got this fire in me to become the best of what i can be i don't want to be better than you and i don't want to be better than anyone else i want to be the best what i can do and that's that's what drives me do you it? think you'll ever find all the answers no no but it depends it just how, how i can peacefully maintain my lifestyle without killing myself early of an heart attack because you can't be how I am all the time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like I've had... F I used to block you, full on. Really full on. Full on. And now I'm just a little, a way more chilled. Yeah, well, I'm, listen, I'm chilled today. Like, this is me chilled, I swear to you. This is, is me. Water, no coffees either? Yeah, so I, I, I got a, a reading back saying that I'm um, borderline in type 2 diabetes on Monday, innit? So I've had to cut out sugar and all that. And that was a wake-up call, man. 
So like, I'm, like me coming here today was a bit hard because I've gotten a little rut the last two days. Right. So this ain't me, man. I am not a lot more enthusiastic than I am. Like, I'm normally a lot more enthusiastic than this. But that was a wake up call because I'm sitting there. I'm like, all right, cool. What can I pay to get sorted? And they're like, shut up. What do you mean? What can you pay? You can't do shit. Yeah. So I've had a wake up call this week, innit? So I'm a bit lost at the minute yeah. of where I want to go. So is that your biggest life changing event? Would you say other than your, other than your kid as well? Um, I'd s mm, maybe no 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 no. I had, I had a breakdown when I first started a stress breakdown, and that was a madness, man. Really? Yeah, that 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 changed my life because I, I blamed it on depression for years, and it weren't depression; it was just stress. And then I learned how to deal with it, and that was my biggest life change. How did you understand the difference between but both? Um. I only learnt um, about two months ago. Right. So there'd become times where I wanted to stay in bed for too long. And I was like, oh, it's all right, it's depression. So I got therapy when, when my baby was born because I wanted to be a bit more chilled out and like don't want to shout at my household. And I wanted to just be a bit more mellow. Um, and I learnt from that. I was just got a stressful lifestyle and that's it. And that was life changing for me to learn because I'm no longer blaming it on something and I'm doing something about it. I'm learning to deal with the stress. Talk to someone once a week. Give yourself a day off if you need it. Go for a long walk. And since I've learned that, that's been my biggest life change, I think. This diabetes thing is curable, isn't it? I just need to lose a bit of weight and stop eating carbs and sugar. Yeah. So I'm good, man. No, it's good to I'm see. good, but I'm a bit zen today. So, <laughs> mate, you didn't even get half of me today, but I, I hope I've done all right for you, innit? But no, I love it, I love it. There's a lot in my head at the minute. No, I love it. I, I'm excited to see, obviously, where you take the whole entire Malik brand. Do you have any uh, any kind of plans to, you know, do potential baby clothing or anything like that under the Malik brand? Yeah, so I make kids' shoes and the, the baby things just... Oh, it's off the hook. It's off the hook, man. Do you know why? And you know what you want to look for. Yeah, I know exactly. But you know what? Simple all in ones. Easy. Oh, all my baby wears is Marks and Spencer, maybe Me grows. too. And, and Sainsbury's. Sainsbury's. Simple stuff. I just, I can't. And I buy him things with like little elephants on. And he's got so much <laughs> Gucci, Fendi, and all that. I don't want him wearing it because I don't wear that sort of stuff at the minute. Yeah. I was saying earlier, and I'll get to that. I'll finish on that, actually. Okay. But the, part, the reason why I've not diving into the baby stuff at the minute yeah is because the price point and I'd, I'd, I'd feel shit charging a high price point to, to like young mums innit yeah. do you know what I mean yeah. it's a bit hard it's already because, fucking tough anyway because when I was looking at like how much like when I was buying Brody's first baby grow his expensive baby grow it's like 300 pounds yeah and I was like who's got that sort of money mm. and then he shits for it anyway and he got a frat <laughs> It's mad, isn't it? <laughs> so I just don't know. I'm just a bit, yeah, I, I probably will do. As it gets bigger, the plan is for Mallet is this. Started off as a shoe brand. I do clothing, I do kids, I do women's. Men's is 90% of it. How do I make everything as successful as men's? And then accessories and then aftershaves and things like that. But I'm not rushing it because yeah. I don't want to take my afterball. So that's, and so that's what I'm doing at the minute. Everything will come in good time when I feel like it's ready. So at the minute, I'm just literally doing what I'm doing because I'm being rushed in at the minute to doing yeah. it and I don't want to be no, rushed into nothing. Too so many people are rushed in. They've got no longevity in their brand and two years in, got no gross margin. They're running sales 24-7. What's the point? I love that. Yeah. I'm not rushing to please all of these stores for them to make more money out of me at the minute. I'm going to become the best in every field in time because yeah. I've got Jevity in this brand because it's a brand now it's not just a quick thing that does super sales it's yeah. a brand yeah. um, so that's the main ambition and the other thing I said early to you yeah I'm going to get this I'm going to make sure I mention this because this, this is a confidence thing where I've got this I've become so confident in myself over the last six months yeah look see the bottle of water I put in a glass you see these brands like um, Nike, who I've been such a big fan of for all these years, and I'm not wearing them no more. I wear the odd pair here and here, but I'm not free promoing anyone. I'm not doing it. I'm gonna promo myself and promo local people like us, yeah, who deserve the promo of each other. I've got the biggest, one of the biggest footwear collections ever, yeah? And what are Nike doing to, I'm giving them free promo more yeah. than I'm doing my own brand. 
what are they doing to give me anything? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So everything now is all blacked out, white t-shirts made customly for myself, yeah? Yeah. And that's what I'm wearing because I don't want to think about anything else. That's the main confidence thing and that's the advice that I want to give today. When you find out how much you're worth, yeah, discount stops. So that's a, the big thing that I'm going through at the minute is that. See how long it lasts, but that's the main part I'm going through. Love that, mate. Appreciate that. Thank you very much again for coming. Sick. Thanks no, for having thanks me, Thanks for coming. I mean, hopefully we can do it again in, you know, six, six to eight months time. Whenever you want. Um, no, I really appreciate that. Good um, luck with everything, man. No. Is, this the, is this the first one and number two? This is the first one, number two, and we're about to start heating it up now. Yeah, make sure you watch it, yeah? <laughs> Get it on. Awesome. Cheers, guys.